There have been some interesting changes in thermal activity in the area near Old Faithful on Geyser Hill. We'll have a look at these features in the July 2023 update of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Now, if you enjoy videos like this, please like and subscribe down below so that we can bring you more content like this in the future. Geysers and hot springs are some of the most dynamic geologic features on the planet. They're always changing, and sometimes that change happens in places that we can actually see and appreciate. That's been the case the last few weeks here on Geyser Hill near Old Faithful. It all started on May 24th with Orem Geyser, which began erupting for the first time in two years. It had repeated eruptions over the weeks that followed. Beehive Geyser, a very well-known geyser that erupts about once a day, began erupting a bit more frequently. And those weren't the only changes. Let's walk over to this closed area and have a look at some of those new features. This is Doublet Pool behind me. And in early June, a small feature formed just next to Doublet Pool and right underneath the boardwalk. It was splashing hot water onto the boardwalk, and that's one of the reasons that this area is closed. But it's not the only feature that formed as part of this thermal activity. Let's walk back around the boardwalks to get to the other side of this closed area and have a look at those features. This vantage point gives us a pretty good view of some of the other thermal activity that occurred in late May and early June. You can see that one feature just there in the sun, that actually formed in 2018, but it had been dormant ever since. It came to life on May 30th. At about the same time, that feature that's right underneath the boardwalk there formed, brand new, and it threw a lot of debris up onto the boardwalk. You can see some rocks and material sitting there. That's one of the reasons that this stretch of boardwalk is closed. This is very similar to some activity that occurred in September of 2018. That's when that first feature out there formed. And that time period is very well known, too, for the rare eruption of Ear Spring. It hadn't erupted in some decades, and when it had its eruption in September 2018, it brought decades of human trash to the surface. Cinder block, coins, cans with pull tabs, even a baby's pacifier. The activity has calmed substantially since early June, and things seem to be on their way to returning to normal. Of course, now the $64,000 question is, what drove this activity? It's tempting to think that it's magma, right? Imparting heat to the surface? And eh, sorry, that's not the case. If that were true, we would expect to see changes throughout the basin, not just in one little localized area of Geyser Hill. We'd also see abundant earthquake activity that could be felt, dramatic ground deformation. This is really more an example of the dynamic nature of Yellowstone's hydrothermal system. It's like the plumbing in an old house, always springing leaks. This is Yellowstone being Yellowstone in its purest form. Well, that's the story here from Geyser Hill. Now let's talk about seismic deformation and geysers activity that occurred throughout the park in June. June was a light month in terms of earthquakes. The University of Utah seismograph stations located just 78 earthquakes throughout the region during the month. The largest was a magnitude 2.8 that occurred just south of the park boundary just before noon on June 17th. There were also no swarms in the region during the month, so a bit of a below average month in terms of earthquakes. Turning now to ground deformation, this is vertical change at the White Lake GPS station on the east side of the caldera. Each dot is one day's worth of data, and this entire plot spans the past two years. Downward trends indicate subsidence, and upward trends indicate uplift. And the pattern we're seeing here has been ongoing since 2015, with subsidence during the fall and winter and most of the spring months, and then a little bit of uplift, or at least a pause in that subsidence, during the summer months. This uplift or pause in subsidence is caused by runoff from snowmelt that percolates into the ground and the ground sort of swells up like a sponge. So we saw subsidence throughout much of late 2022 and early 2023, and that's transition to uplift due to that groundwater that's puffing the ground up like a sponge. And now looking at data from Steamboat Geyser, the tallest geyser in the world. This is the temperature measured in Steamboat's runoff channel, and there was a major eruption on June 9th, this is the fifth major eruption of the year. You can see the large spike in temperature there. And after that event, we went back to daily temperature variation. So we're really just sensing air temperature here. There's no indication of any minor activity that's really gotten abundant at Steamboat. So that probably means another major eruption is not just around the corner, but hopefully the geyser is not yet done putting on a show for visitors. We'd like to acknowledge all of the citizen scientists that made observations related to this new Geyser Hill activity. We're grateful for their contributions. Well, that does it for the July 2023 YVO update. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to email us. Our address is yvowebteam, that's all one word, at usgs.gov. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next month. Bye-bye.